Uh, Wilfred Kenwell Smith once said, as Christians, we explain the existence of the Milky Way by the doctrine of creation. But how do we explain the existence of the Bhagavad Gita? And this is, this is precisely the point. Why is there such a diversity of really astonishing truths and insight and value in the world? Why are there so many religious traditions? Incredible images, really. The task of understanding religious diversity and understanding it in a theological way or in a religious way developed out of my own spiritual development. Beginning as a Catholic child and an atheist in the teenage days and then becoming an exclusivist Christian and then getting a deeper appreciation of Buddhism, uh, this, this kind of development created in me uh, the need uh, to understand what was going on with me and also what is going on in the world. The conviction grew in me that um, at least Buddhism and, and Christianity are both of equal value, that uh, uh, you cannot reasonably claim that one of these two traditions is superior to the other. So I should combine as, as much as possible for myself insights from both traditions. I can learn from Buddhism and still continue being a Christian, why not? The only necessity that I would see that would justify a conversion to a, another religion would be the belief that Christianity is basically wrong, incurably false or bad. And this is not how I feel. I'm quite happy with Christianity. Uh, Mexican, Spanish, television, German, Austrian, they're reporting Blanco, Blanco, white, white. Pope Benedict XVI began his papacy today. The former Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger is known as a strict advocate of church doctrine. I was accused by a professor uh, in our department of heresy and therefore I should not be given permission to teach uh, Catholic theology. The local cardinal, he demands that I publish an unambiguous refutation of all my views in the theology of religions. And, and my reply was, uh, uh, with all respect, uh, I cannot do that. When Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger became Pope Benedict XVI, he had already established his reputation as a severe doctrinaire Catholic conservative. He came to worldwide prominence as prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, in charge of enforcing church orthodoxy and discipline. Cardinal Ratzinger, who at that stage was the head of the Congregation of Doctrine in Rome, then issued the directive that permission to teach should be denied in my case. Ratzinger uh, knew some of my writings and he has criticized me in, in, in several places. So I had to escape and found asylum in Scotland 
uh, where I was offered a chair in systematic theology and religious studies at the University of Glasgow. I then decided during my time in Scotland to uh, leave the Roman Catholic Church and become an Anglican. I taught in Scotland for nine years and for entirely personal reasons we had the idea that it would be good to return to Germany. So then the University of Münster had just created a new chair in uh, religious studies and intercultural theology, and that's how I uh, came to Münster. organic nature. Certain composite structures replicate uh, within each part of their composition. To give you a clear example, uh, if you take a fern leaf, you see that the fern leaf is composed of smaller leaves uh, which resemble the whole structure of the fern leaf. This is called a fractal structure. Now, I'm convinced that these fractal patterns also apply in cultures and in religions. So that prominent differences between cultures reappear when we look at the intracultural uh, diversity and even at each individual. And that the same is also true for religions. intra-religious diversity, the diversity that we find within each of the religious traditions, mirrors the diversity that we find at a global level, that is inter-religious diversity. When you start seeing this kind of replication of diversity patterns in different religious traditions, you can no longer say Oh, Christians believe in a personal God, the creator of heaven and earth, while Buddhists believe in some kind of impersonal ultimate. If you take a closer look, you will see that there are plenty of personal expressions of ultimate reality in Buddhism. The eternal Buddha plays a, a central role in a number of forms of Buddhism. And in Christianity, you find ideas of an impersonal ultimate. Now this kind of insight is a new basis for the theology of religions. For all of a sudden, we realize that what we are thinking about global religious diversity has its implication for the diversity within one's own religious tradition, and even for the diversity that you experience in your personal religious development. But if we find out that, at, at least to a large extent, the components of fractal patterns are made up of compatible differences, that would give us a radically different view of religious diversity on the Earth. And if all human beings were looking alike, uh, were thinking alike, this, this would be hellish. In a similar way, if all religions would be alike, this would not be for the greater glory of God. And the insight into the fractal structure of religious diversity can help us in developing such a genuine appreciation of religious diversity. Thank you.
Pure light, joyful light, the light of wisdom, light constant, inconceivable, light beyond speaking, light excelling sun and moon, he sends forth, illuminating countless worlds, The multitudes of beings all receive the radiance.